Todd describes a teaming wagon, Morris. What cargo did you have on board? Oh, here's my bill of lading, Marshal. Eight gallons of sorted ink, two fonts of type in cases, one new model improved printing press. Well, now, who in tarnation would want to steal a printing press? I don't know. Maybe they thought I was carrying other valuables on my wagon. <laughs> I think I stay with the horses. Oh, no, my friend. You're not going to let me face this young lady alone just because you know it's going to be unpleasant. Now, who could that be? Don't tell me, Jenny, you've got another customer. To put it mildly, Mrs. Aldridge, I could use one. Well, I don't care if it's the mayor's wife herself. You've simply got to get my dress finished on time. Miss Bailey? Yes. May we come in, please? Oh, well, please do. Why, Jenny, you didn't tell me you had a young man. Or is it two young men? Uh, pardon us, ma'am, but we came to see Miss Bailey on a matter of business. I'm Jenny's neighbor. I keep a motherly eye on her. My name is Aldrich, Mrs. Peggy Aldrich. And who are you? Oh, you might say that we're two men who came to see Miss Bailey on some private business, which we'd like to get down to, if you don't mind. Well, I've never had such a comeuppance in all my born days. You mustn't mind Mrs. Aldridge. She's one of those people that thinks everything she doesn't know about is illegal. However, she was right about one thing. I still don't know who you are. Oh, I guess it's all right if we introduce ourselves now without the whole town knowing about it. This is my partner, El Toro. It's a pleasure, senorita. Hello. And you? My name's Carson. Kit Carson? Mm-hmm. I've heard so much about you. Miss Bailey, you look like a real sensible girl, so I'm going to give it to you straight. Those stocks that you mailed to Sacramento are completely worthless. Worthless? This is, this is terrible. That stock was all my father left me when he passed away last month. This is the stock that you mailed in. The printing is the same as on the genuine certificates, but the signatures of the company offices are forgeries. What did your father pay for this? Two thousand dollars. There are a lot of disappointed investors who bought stock in the Golden Girl over the regular market price. If I were offered such a bargain, I would fall for it myself. I can't guarantee we'll get your money back for you, but we're here to run down this counterfeit stock. Maybe you can help us. Any way I can. Your father bought this stock from an old miner, an invalid, I believe, didn't he? Yes. How did you know? Because all the other investors were cheated by the same man. This miner, Tom O'Donnell, sold the stock at a bargain price saying he needed the money for medical treatment. Do you know where we might find him? No. All my father told me was that he paid the market price. Does anyone in this town sell stock? Yes, Mr. Graham. He has an office near the hotel. He tried to sell my stock for me, but he couldn't find a buyer. That's why I sent it direct to the mining company in Sacramento. What's his reputation? Oh, very good. Everybody trusts George Graham. Well, we better check up on this Mr. Graham. And where do I report to you, amigo, after I do just that? Well, if Mr. Carson doesn't want it known that he's in town, he can stay here for the moment. Oh, you're very kind, senorita. And my friend's lucky to have such charming company. <coughs> Excuse me, senorita. I have in mind to change my investments. In the past, I've invested in horses and cattle, and too frequently in the luck of the cards. And now I have some little money. How much? $5,000, which is on deposit in the Bank of Baja California. Mm -hmm. Well, I would recommend an investment in one of the new California mines. The most promising of all, I'm told, is the Golden uh, Lady. No, you mean the Golden Girl. <laughs> well, you're right about that. But most of that stock is firmly held. Wait a minute. Let's see if I have any for sale. Mm. 
No, I'm sorry. I have no golden girl to offer. It's too bad because you double your money in the near future. Oh, I have a great need to double my money. In my family, there are many rich relatives, all of whom look down on me. Now, wait a minute. Maybe you can buy into that company after all. There was a man in town yesterday who held some of that stock, a sick miner. Ah, poor sheep. Yeah, bad case of rheumatism. He's staying at the hotel, but he spends most of his time with his doctor. He said he'd be in today after 2 o'clock. Now it's 1.40. Yeah. Suppose you drop over in about 20 minutes and have a talk with Mr. O'Donnell. Oh, I shall certainly be there to meet the senor. Good, and let me know how you make out, because if Mr. O'Donnell sells you any stock, I have a commission coming from him. You will definitely hear from me, senor. Gracias. Good. Thank you. Beautifully, and to have the opportunity of buying stock in the Golden Girl Mine. From George Graham? No, better yet, from the unfortunate miner who is sick. Then you found him? No, but thanks to Senor Graham, I am to have an appointment with him at his hotel. Now we're getting somewhere. You just buy the stock and I'll take care of the rest. See you later, Miss Bailey. Come on, Torrance. All right. Yeah, but there's no need to hurry. He won't be there until two. Senor O'Donnell? Who are you and what do you want? I'm a man with money to invest. I was sent to see you by the stockbroker, Senor Graham. Uh, Shylock, he wants another commission. Well, come in, come in, come in. Oh, let me help you. Oh, I don't need any help. I'll get rid of this rheumatism as soon as I can afford more treatment. Senor O'Donnell, I would like to see that you have the best medical care in all California. I'd like to assure for you a healthy old age. How? Well, I hear that you have for sale some stock in a mining company known as the Golden Girl. Yeah, that's right. It's all I have in the world. Golden Girl is selling for $12 a share in Sacramento. But I'm desperate for cash now. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have it for, for $10. How many? 500 shares. $5,000. Está bien, I'll write you out a draft on my bank. No, 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 no. None of that. I've got to have the cash. Now, when can you get it? Well, it takes a long time to bring money up from my bank. I must have the cash by tomorrow. Mañana? You come back tomorrow, same time, and see that you bring $5,000 cash with you, understand? Well, Senor O'Donnell... Uh, uh, tomorrow, same time. Now, my, I must have my best now. Just one minute, senor. Oh, what? Before I raise $5,000 in cash, I should actually know that you have the stock you offer to me. You show me the money and I'll show you the stock. You show them to me and I'll get you the money. I've taken you at your word about the money, and now you just have to take mine about the stock. Now. Well, senor, that will not be necessary. If I look in your bureau or in your pocket, I'm sure I will find oh. it. Now, now you've done it. You, you made me stand here too long. Bring, bring over that chair, will you?
you're El Toro. What happened to you? I'm enjoying a headache that was built for a bull. Oh, well, come over here. Sit down. Yes, Graham's the name, George Graham. I've been out checking on some of the mines around here. What about this one? Oh, that's been abandoned. As you can see, that shack hasn't been lived in for years. You're Kit Carson, aren't you? That's right. I hope I'm not intruding, but that's the penalty you pay for being well known. Will you be in our town long? It all depends on how long it takes me to clear up my business. Well, if you need any help, don't hesitate to call on me. Thanks, Mr. Graham. I might do that. I'll see you in town. your friend? Kit Carson. Carson? Why bring him here? Bring him? I had to ditch the O'Donnell disguise and change horses. He was only one jump behind me. We should have drilled him while we had the chance. Oh, no, never mind. I can handle Mr. Carson without any shooting. Now, I'll keep him busy in town while we change our base of operations. Hey, Orville. Orville! Look at these. No one could possibly tell them from the genuine. No one ever will. How soon can you get your press and equipment crated? But I still have to run the green ink on the last batch. Look, the important thing is to get your outfit moved over into Nevada. Kit Carson's in town. I get packed right away. Look, George, if we're to make Nevada, we'll need grub for ourselves and more feed for the horses. All right, then follow me to town and get the supplies you need. I gotta be back there and keep an eye on Carson. Oh, Mr. Carson. Come in. Miss Bailey. Oh, what a cute little boy. I suppose you're watching him for his mother? I'm in no mood for jokes. I'm suffering from a great infirmity of the cabeza. What have you been doing? I found out where they hide the printing press. The one that prints those fake certificates. You did? Yes, but it's more closely guarded than the Washington Mint. I saw the gleam of gun barrels through the window. What else did you accomplish? I also found out the true identity of our minor friend, Tom O'Donnell. You interest me very much. I would like to meet the Senor O'Donnell again. When you do, you'll be surprised. All I need is one more piece of evidence, and I'm going for that right now. Wait for me. I also have an account to settle with him. See you later, Miss Bailey. All right. Down and take it easy. First you say hurry up, then we take it easy. Por qué? Sometimes you can make more progress by just sitting still. I don't get it. Well, Mrs. Aldrich. What can I do for you? Here are two coupons due from the bonds you sold me. Well, I should be glad to cash them for you, of course. Uh, let's see. Here. Ten dollars for each. There's your twenty dollars, oh, Mrs. Aldrich. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Graham. Oh, well, by the way, uh, how do you like my new dress? Uh, fetching. <laughs> Very fetching indeed. A bit too elegant for a one-horse town. But that's the way Jenny Bailey says a man would like it. 
And it seems our little Jenny knows more about what men would like than we've given her credit for knowing. Oh, don't tell me Jenny Bailey has finally gotten herself an admirer. That she has. And you know who it is? Kit Carson, no less. That's very interesting. You know him? Oh, I, I've met him. Yes, he's a very fine young man. Oh, and a very smart one, too. I hear he's run down the printing press that prints that counterfeit mining stock. You know, the one that Jenny's father bought from the invalid miner. I take it you've been doing a little neighborly eavesdropping? I feel a motherly responsibility for that girl. She's much too attractive to be left without watchful guidance. Oh, of course, uh, when a man like Mr. Carson is interested in... <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. Mrs. Aldrich, it's always a pleasure to have a chat with you. You are the best informed woman I've ever met. Oh, you flatter me, Mr. Graham. Well, I must be going. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Aldrich. Oh, George, I wanted to... Hold it. What did you bring that wagon into town for? We had to get supplies, like I told you, and they're all loaded. When do we leave for Nevada? Not until we take out extra insurance. Carson's on our trail, and it's getting hotter every minute. Look, get this carefully. Down the street, you'll find a little store with a sign saying, Dressmaking done reasonably. Now, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I beg your pardon, senor. This afternoon, when I visit your room number nine, I think I forgot my spectacles. I cannot read without them. Would you help me look for them, please? Why, certainly. Put up your hand. Marshal, my name is Kit Carson. Well, why in tarnation didn't you say so? Uh, glad to know you. Uh, my name's Whitaker. Uh, sorry I butted in like this, but you sure look suspicious when you tore that page out of the hotel register. Well, Marshal, let's just say I borrowed it. This might be the evidence I need to clear up the Golden Girl mining swindle. Oh, so you were after those counterfeit certificates too, huh? Uh-huh. What do you know about them? Well, only that they were being peddled by an invalid old miner, a man nobody can find. Well, we're going after him right now. He's right down the street. Well, uh, by all means, senor, try to find my spectacles. Without them, I cannot see. Toro, I'd like you to meet Marshal Whitaker. All He's right. going to meet us in Graham's office in about ten minutes. We'll see you there. All right. Did you get what you wanted? Yes, but it may not be enough to cinch the case. Go over to Jenny Bailey's and get a stock certificate. Bring it to me in Graham's office. Muy bien. Carson, what can I do for you? I've come for some of that help that you were kind enough to offer me. If I can be of service to you? You can. As I understand it, some mining securities of questionable value have been sold around town by uh, an invalid miner. Oh, Tom O'Donnell. I'd like to get my hands on that hombre myself. What do you know about him? Well, I've never met the man, but I understand he's rather badly crippled by rheumatism. He wears a full beard, eyeglasses. I'd like to put that in my report to Sacramento. Would you mind writing that down, please? Mm -hmm. Not at all. Tom O'Donnell, age unknown. Probably in... Just as I suspected. The handwriting is identical to the writing on the hotel register. You are Tom O'Donnell. And what are you going to do about it? Put you under arrest. I don't believe so. After all, a very good friend of yours is involved in all this. Young lady by the name of Jenny Bailey. What are you driving at? Miss Bailey is on her way to an undisclosed destination. At my orders. Kate, the senorita, she's gone. What have you done with her? Miss Bailey is being taken to a place which is known only to me. And unless I get there within half an hour, she's not coming back. You've thought of everything, haven't you? Well, I try. Well, Marshal, good afternoon. What's on your mind? Uh, there's been a little misunderstanding, Marshal, uh, which I'm very happy to clear up. Graham had no connection with the counterfeit stock swindle. Uh, on the contrary, the senor has been most helpful. Well, I'm sure glad to know you're in the clear, George. If there's anything else you want to check with me, Carson, I'll be in my office. You, uh, try one? I'd like to try my finger on this trigger. Oh, if you do, it'll be just too bad for Jenny Bailey. 
I'm playing for big stakes, Carson. And you nor anyone else is going to stop me. Now get out of here. And have that girl back here before dark, or you'll never live to tell the story. Thank you for understanding the situation so well. And, uh, I would not advise you to follow me. What are we going to do now? Take his advice? We'll pick up his trail later. I know exactly where he's going. I just saw my wagon, Marshal. The one that was stolen with the print and press on it? Yeah, and it looked like the same two guys held me up. But they had a girl with them this time. You sure it was your wagon? Yep, I know it in the dark. Where'd you see it? Up on the north road, close to that old petered out mine on Flint Ridge. All right, I'll get some men, we'll check up on it. Mr. Graham! We're all set to go. When do we leave? As soon as we get the printing press loaded. You've been followed. Two men are coming up the road. in Nevada. But this change will have to be made on horseback. You know, Orville, you're a very fine, fine printer, but a very poor rider. But the good of all concerned, I think you should stay here. No, George! Hands up, all of you! Come on, step in, drop that gun! If I haven't forgotten my arithmetic, there's $2,000 here. Courtesy of George Graham. Oh, Mr. Carson, I can't tell you how grateful I am. You can't imagine what this means to me. Oh, but we can, senorita. It means freedom, liberation from cackling hens like Senora Aldrich. Oh, Jenny, dear, I just want to tell you Mrs. how Mrs. Aldrich, happy. you've been making a lifetime career of sticking your nose into other people's business. What? But, my dear, I've Hoping and praying that someday you'd find something to talk about. Well, now you've got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 